Hey guys, so today we're going to be talking about something that uh, uh, one of you guys asked me on my Instagram Q&A not too long ago and I got such great feedback on the way I answered this question that I decided that I'm going to make it into a YouTube video. So basically someone asked me what is the one thing I've kept consistent since I started to see major growth and I'm assuming two things, right? I'm assuming that he means business growth and I'm assuming he means like some sort of action, right? Stick to the end because this video is not gonna, probably not gonna be the thing that you expect in terms of my answer. My head immediately went to think about the various habits that I have, right? That I've kept up with and the thing that I, that was like the first domino in since me starting to see growth. And I thought about all these things like 5 a.m. starts, dieting, journaling, and things along these lines, right? Like meditation, reading, things, things like that. But then I kind of realized like none of these habits I've been able to stick to over the past year. So for example, waking up at 5 a.m., I stopped doing that at like 17 because I realized that it doesn't fit my chronotype. And, you know, like waking up at 5 a.m., my brain is completely fucked, right? And I can't do any work because I can't go to bed early enough. <laughs> not can't, choose not to. Now, when it comes to diet, I haven't really need stuck to a strict diet or a way of eating since I lost my weight and got into pretty decent shape, right? Because I was able to maintain a very uh, a, a acceptable shape without, you know, tracking macros and things along those lines. So it's definitely not diet. And journaling, I did a lot of, but this year profits have doubled and I haven't really journaled. Like um, I can count on one hand the times I've journaled, right? Whereas last year I journaled a ton. <laughs> So this kind of led me to realizing like, there's not really a, a one thing that I've kept consistent with because at different stages in your growth journey, you'll need different things to do, right? Because what's gonna get you from A to B is not the same thing that's gonna get you from C to Z, right? And that kind of led me to discover a relationship between uh, growth and a relationship between time, right? And in this case, I'm just gonna model this purely from a financial and business growth standpoint, since, you know, um, uh, relationship growth, personal growth, those are kind of like more abstract numbers and it's kind of hard to measure, right? So when I say growth, I just mean like finances and that's gonna be the main tracker uh, and the main metric we did uh, use in this model. So basically, um, the thing that I kind of realized was there's not really one single thing that I did, but it's more so like being consistent at trying to improve and trying to grow, right? Like if the goal is to be the best version of yourself and be like create insane amounts of wealth for yourself, then it doesn't really matter what actions you kind of take together. It's more so just being consistent at chipping away at that specific goal, right? So I've kind of modeled it like this, right? Assuming that everyone starts at a very similar point, which is zero, and there are essentially two types of people. Uh, let's call the uh, let let's call this line reds, right? And then just uh, this line we call them greens. And essentially, what they're supposed to symbolize is red is supposed to symbolize symbolize mediocrity, and green is uh, to symbolize exceptional, right? And everyone should aim to be exceptional. No one should aim for mediocrity because, you know, that's really boring. Basically, th th these time measurements are, are arbitrary numbers. You can think about them as months, years, uh, decades, whatever. It doesn't really matter. But it's more so the general split that kind of matters, right? So, for example, uh, when you first start a business, right, because you really want to grow and you're really obsessed with becoming the best version of yourself and you want to create financial freedom for yourself, whatever really motivates you, right? Like maybe it's hitting 10K a month, buying a Lambo, things along those lines. To your peers, so to people who are red, right? Let's be honest, most people are mediocre. That's why there is a term such as average, right? To the reds, you, you might be an idiot or you might be seen as crazy or taking a huge risk with your life, right? Because you're essentially sacrificing short-term uh, short term profits uh, for potential long-term upside. So you can see this is demonstrated right here where, you know, growth uh, of the, the reds is above yours because you're taking more, you're, you're trying to pursue a path that is less common, right? So it's inevitable that you're going to make more mistakes along the way. And if we were to try to translate to the, uh, this into financial senses, it would be me choosing to listen to podcasts and read books in my first year of uni 
as opposed to going out and getting a part-time job working in a restaurant for example like definitely the people that were working in restaurants and did part-time jobs they had more money than me aka in the red and i was in the green because i was just like watching podcasts and listening to audiobooks because i thought that you know nine pounds fifty an hour was not worth my time right i put i i, I didn't want to work for someone else just to make nine pounds fifty an hour because if i wanted a pair of shoes for example that cost like 60 pounds that would be essentially six hours of my life to trade for a pair of shoes like that's this is not really a good trade in my opinion so when you first start a business right you you sacrifice that short-term gain for potential long-term much bigger upside and people will think you're an idiot you're crazy and you're being risky when really i feel like they just don't really understand the long-term implications right and then you get to the stage where you know after a while they they see how hard you have worked and how many late nights you've uh, stayed up till right and you're you're just starting to see results and they're basically in a very similar position as you because let's say they're working in a traditional company and they get regular promotions things along those lines you know they, they, <laughs> this is what i call like the the told you stage right where people are like ah oh, you know I, I i told you it was probably not really worth it because at this point you might have had one or two failures so for example for me that would have been like you know trying to sell men's accessories at like 15 16 and kind of getting overwhelmed with that or you know uh spending eight hours a day flipping items on the water warcraft auction house when you know i wasn't even making any real money from that things along those lines right it, it, it might be in the i told you so stage right but then what you're going to notice is if you if you are consistent with the path of you know trying to maintain good habits trying to grow and doing all of the things that really benefit you in the long run you're going to see that the, this uh, this gap start diverging right and everyone has their ups and downs so for example like in business there's like market conditions timings things along those lines that could affect your business but over the long run if you build equity within yourself in terms of growing your skill set and stuff like that um you're just gonna have such that there's just gonna be such a big difference between you and what we call mediocre so the reds right that it's going to become apparent and this is what i call the next stage which is the good for you stage right when people can notice this difference and people are happy for you because you know in, in life generally speaking we want to look for people in a better position than us and we want to aspire to be like them so if you can be that for your peers then this is what i call the good for you stage because people are genuinely happy for you and they they see that you're succeeding and they would love the same success so they want to learn from you and they want to you know um, basically they're, they're genuinely really happy to see you succeed because it's an example to them of what they could potentially do for themselves right and this is what i call the good for you stage and as you grow you're going to see that the the tiny the tiny changes in your day-to-day -day actions and the micro decisions that you make really compounds over time because th this gap essentially between you guys is going to get wider and wider right it's kind of like how if you're trying to uh, travel set sail from the uk to america you really need to make sure the 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 degree at which you're kind of like traveling is on point because even if you're like one degrees too far to the left or one degree is too far to the right you're going to end up in a completely different country right it's literally the same kind of concept here and then eventually as time goes on and as you grow and you just leave mediocrity in the dust right you're gonna <laughs> you people are gonna start kind of assuming uh, assigning reasons as to why you're better than them because they and this is what I call like the kind of like he got lucky stage. I, I'm bro, I'm nowhere near here yet, but this is just like from what I've heard from uh, friends of mine and things along those lines, right? So the next stage is what I call the he got lucky stage, which is basically you over time you've just left everyone in the dust, but then to everyone else because they haven't been with you along along the journey they kind of just see that as oh it's just, you know lucky and trying to attribute your success to anything but your hard work and the reason they do that is because 
once you go above a certain threshold of like success they a lot of people it, it kind of like breaks their reality right so for example when i was younger i would hear about numbers like our oh, millionaires right and to me i couldn't even fathom what a million could possibly look like in fact i didn't even know how to spend more than like three thousand pounds a month i would just be like yo like what do you actually spend money on right after a, a certain amount and it's because back then like it would violate my reality like i wouldn't know what it is and because it violates your someone's reality and violates kind of like their identity to an extent they become very defensive and that's why they come up with a bunch of excuses right like he got lucky that's why i call this the he got lucky stage and over a period of let's say like 20 30 40 years once once you hit almost like the pinnacle of your uh potential right this is what i call the rich asshole stage so basically to, to go back to the original question right like what is the one thing you've kept consistent since you started seeing major growth it's basically just me um keeping my eye on the main focus of what i want to do and just going after it and trying to be as rational and as uh, objective as i can to try to move myself towards that goal right so it's it's not really like any specific action or anything along those lines because even if you try to do an action over and over again you can't really keep consistent with it because life is volatile right which is which is why it's just really important that you you realize that in life you oscillate up and down but you need to make sure you oscillate up more than you go down so it's called the oscillating ascent let's say right so yeah if i were to put like numbers <laughs> on this it would be like this would be the broke stage right and then this would be five figures because you know most people who are working normal jobs they're they're making five figures except you're working like 80 hours in the beginning to make five figures so it's it's like oh, i told you and good for you would be what i would probably call six figures and then he got lucky at seven figures and then anything eight plus would be considered a rich asshole right because if you look on social media like people who are rich people just seem to hate them because they think you know they're like exploiting labor and things along those lines anyways now let, let's talk about like some of the common characteristics of the reds versus the greens right the the number one thing that i've kind of noticed is the unconscious patterns and the conscious patterns right so a lot of people um especially when they're younger they're kind of unconscious about the different patterns that play out in their lives and one of my favorite quotes i, I actually forgot who this was by but it was by one of the philosophers and it basically said if you don't make the unconscious conscious, it's gonna rule your life and people call it fate. So essentially it's like, uh, easiest example I can think of is if there's a fat person, for example, right? And this person knows he's fat, he knows that he needs to lose weight, otherwise over a period of 30 years, he's gonna, you know, get a bunch of disease and he's gonna die young, right? However, he's unconscious of the different pattern behavioral patterns that he exhibits so for example i i used to have like fat person habits right like i used to just open the fridge and eat whatever the fuck i want because it was like short-term gratification and i ended up eating it and then realizing only after the fact that ah oh, okay i probably shouldn't have eaten that and then after realizing that the next day i just do the same fucking thing again right i was unconscious of this pattern whereas a person who is aiming for exception, ex uh, trying to be exceptional, then they become conscious about the pattern in their life. So for example, um, after exercising for a while, I know that you know skipping gyms two days in a row will be much more likely to lead me to skipping more days if I don't kind of like catch that pattern early, right? And people who are trying to aim for exception, they try to, they actively work to break the bad patterns as early as possible and they try to be able to spot them as early as possible next is uh the what i call like go with the flow mentality which is basically just you know uh wh wherever life takes me right and <laughs> wherever life takes you it'll either take you to mediocrity or a lot of the time to the worst place imaginable right like if you in my opinion i haven't seen a single person succeed 
unless they live their life intentionally in terms of uh, being mindful of the micro decisions they make day to day and uh, trying to actively surround themselves with people who are productive individuals who are going to be positive and encouraging of their growth as opposed to people who are negative things along those lines like trying to be intentional about everything you do um, the next thing I see perpetuated across like social media and the internet a lot is people are saying ah oh, you're perfect the way you are or like the I'm perfect the way I am, right? Instead, I, I try to replace that in myself by telling myself, ah, oh, I suck, but I'm okay with it because I know I'm gonna do something about it to fix it, right? So I think a lot of people confuse self-acceptance with uh, being like, just like staying the same because surely the the logic kind of is like, yeah, if, if I accept myself, I should be okay with staying where I am. By staying where I am, I'm accepting myself. This is completely false. Like, uh, it's, it's just so annoying because if you think you're accepting yourself means staying the same place, then you're gonna get nowhere in life, right? It's really important that you, you're okay with telling yourself you're a piece of shit right now, but if you work on yourself in the future, you're not gonna be a piece of shit, right? Next is forward thinking. Um, forward thinking, long-term thinking is basically the same thing. Basically, it's just not always reminiscing on the old, good old times, right? Like a lot of this. This is a pattern that I've started to see play out in my friend circles now, um, and it's basically just always talking about the used to be's and the good old times of like high school, uh, middle school, university, things along those lines, like how crazy life was back then and how like normal everything is, what well, normal everything is now. Um, constantly reminiscing about your past could actually lock you into an identity. And I actually, I, I really struggled with this at one point, right? Where I really uh, resonated with the fact that, ah, oh, yeah, you know, like I'm from an immigrant family and like I was poor growing up and shit like that, right? And I res really resonated with it to the point where I would feel uncomfortable in a uh, wealthy setting. So for example, when I first moved to the center of London, it was a very posh area, right? And I would feel uncomfortable going into stores and just basically like asking for help and things along those lines because I felt like I was super out of place. But then I kind of just forced myself to to go for it. And then now I'm, now I feel uncomfortable in like, <laughs> like uh, shittier environments, let's say, right? So, so being forward thinking is really important in terms of always looking ahead, in my opinion, but also being present at the same time. It's kind of something I'm really struggling with at the moment, like trying to balance being present with also then being forward thinking enough to look at the future, things along those lines, right? And lastly is uh, extreme ownership of everything in your reality. So what I mean by this is, um, and this is again, something that I didn't really understand until recently, like what extreme ownership is. I used to think that extreme ownership is blaming yourself uh, for everything that happens to you, good, bad, or ugly, right? Basically just saying, ah, oh, you know, everything is my fault. Uh, if I do good, it's my fault. If I do bad, it's my fault. But it's actually, <laughs> it was a pretty bad way to see things because when I would be exploited in, I don't know, like a business transaction or people would do me dirty or something, I'd always just like take the blame and just, um, you know, move on and try to do my best to avoid those kinds of interactions going forward. But the key difference here that I got wrong was fault does not mean is not the same thing as responsibility so taking responsibility for your reality and taking it is basically taking control of your life but by taking responsibility you don't actually take on the fault right so for example if someone i don't know like hits me or whatever uh it's not my fault that they hit me because i pl place myself in the same room as them it's their fault but it's my responsibility to either sue them fight fight back or you know what I mean? Like taking responsibility is not the same as admitting fault. So yeah, extreme ownership is really important. And these are basically the things I've observed between people who are mediocre and people who are exceptional 
and the, I guess, five things to keep consistent uh, to see major growth. So yeah, hope you guys found this video useful, bit of a rant, but yeah, for those that enjoyed it and watched to this point, thank you for your attention and uh, leave a thumbs up.